down. We have two others severely damaged. November 10th, 2012. At 11 11, 911 calls set in motion a response to a deadly and destructive disaster. I need water directly in the back. I need tank top and power ASAP. A second grade teacher and her husband killed. And I know I got two neighbors that aren't coming back. Several homes destroyed, many more damaged, three people arrested, two lived in the neighborhood. Now, new video from the night of the blast. And survivors talking for the first time. I look over and went, oh no, that's my house. But it, it, I mean, I'm looking at this going, what happened? Plus, one year later, the trouble people are having moving back into their homes. It's frustrating. And the families on the road to recovery. We can overcome. We can overcome a stigma. We can overcome anything. TV6. This is a Call 6 Investigator Special. Richmond Hill. Road to Recovery. Now, here's Rafael Sanchez. Investigators call this area behind me Ground Zero. This is where the explosion occurred in Richmond Hill, south of downtown Indianapolis. The homeowner, Monserrati Shirley, her friend Mark Ray Leonard, and his brother Robert, who lived somewhere else, stand accused of blowing up the home to cash in on a $300,000 insurance policy. A fourth person is still wanted. DNA belonging to the man was found on the door of the home Shirley owned. The criminal cases are a constant reminder of the sights and sounds impossible to forget. A night when people ran from the flames and held on to faith and family. The moonlight's surrender to daylight lets Christina Hunter run while the crickets roar. For me, running has always been a thankful exercise. It's her time to re-energize and reflect on a year that took an unexpected twist. A lot of people sat an airplane and crashed into the neighborhood. Christina and her family have lived in Richmond Hill for four years. Their house was one of 125 homes in the neighborhood that stood before 11, 11 p.m. on November the 10th, 2012. On that night, few knew the house at 8349 Field Fairway was filling up with gas. Next door, at 8343 Field Fair, the Olvey family was hanging out in the living room area. Glenn Olvey did not umpire softball as usual that day and spent the night with his wife and two teenage daughters. Across the street, at 8330, two cakes were cooling off for a church celebration the next day. Michelle Smith plays piano at worship service and planned on watching some Saturday Night Live. But at 8336 Field Fair, something strange was happening in Mavis Byers' home. She began videotaping her usually tame poodle. Snuggles was jumping on the furniture and running to their front door. Mavis now thinks her dog could smell the gas that was building up across the street. Down the street at 3953 Tohees Drive, Doug Aldridge had just finished watching the Notre Dame game. At 4012 Armada Drive, it was time to go to bed. Ben and Leslie Melvin had spent most of the evening at a fundraising gala at the Armory in Franklin. Next door at 4018 Armada Drive is where Christina lives with her husband Nick and their two children Molly and Jackson. They were not home at 1111. That's when 8349 Field Fairway shattered into pieces. It was the unthinkable. We've got one house down. We have two others severely damaged and possibly two others minor. Christina and her family were camping in Johnson County. Once they heard what was unfolding in their neighborhood, they turned to their smartphones to pull up their security cameras. We could see the smoke, we could see, you know, we could hear people, we could hear, and then all of a sudden it went dark. They'd installed cameras months earlier due to an attempted robbery. So for the first time, we now see and hear the boom and flash of light that forced many people out of their homes. The shockwave burst their front door open and rattled their entire house. Another camera in the kitchen captured this. 
In the aftermath, $74,000 in structural damage. For me, it was, it was a holy cow moment. Um, it was an eye-opener. Their surveillance system would also record their neighbors, who instead of just running away, stopped to check in on their well-being. Hello? Anybody home? Anybody home? Please tell me if you're home. Hello? That was, that was something. That neighbor, Ben Melvin, before fleeing from the flames visible from his home's picture window, Ben ran to the hunter's home. I just, you know, made sure the, that my family was okay and I knew that, that obviously someone needed help. Hello? I, I don't even know why I did it. I just, I just did. I can say that we are blessed. Um, not only because we got to see that kind of spirit and that kind of courage, but we're blessed because through this, we've gotten to know even more of our neighbors that go to and rush in and don't run away. Christina's route, her routine, provide daily reminders. Though it's never easy to pass the property where her neighbors died. We mourn. We mourn for their families. We mourn for, I mean, that's a loss, an unimaginable loss. So she runs, not from what happened, but to what lies beyond the horizon. People miles away called 911 after feeling the impact of the blast, but no one could ever imagine the magnitude of what happened here. And we have extensive damage to a lot of houses along this area. We got a lot of frantic people. Within four minutes of the first 911 call, Firefighters, on and off-duty police, and paramedics came face to face with the people in panic. The noises, it, the the cries for help, the I've never. I mean, I know what pandemonium means. I've never witnessed it before, and I know now what it looks like. Dion and Jennifer Longworth, who lived next door to the home which exploded, had no chance to escape. Go ahead received a call that in the basement and on the second floor, 8355 Field Fairway, we have two people trapped in the residence. Unfortunately, you know, we did lose uh, two neighbors, uh, uh, two sweet people that, you know, had a big impact on the community and in the neighborhood. The Longworths, married for 11 years, met while working at the Greenwood Park Mall. She graduated from Ball State, he from IUPUI. They enjoyed the Colts. Jennifer loved teaching. Dion, the electrical engineer, was proud of his garden. A young couple whose good nature and love blossomed in the lives of others. They will never be forgotten. A Longworth tradition will continue at Southwest Elementary School in Johnson County. Teachers and staff will once again knit and crochet hats and scarves in Jennifer's memory. It's what Jennifer did for her second graders every year. A tighter knit neighborhood is what you'll find one year later, but not everyone was able to return home. In a rental for so long. For almost a year. Ryan and Sabrina Konecki are tired of making this drive. I'm ready. I'm just ready to home. They knew where they were going to live after their wedding. Friends and family rejoiced in a picture-perfect union in June 2002, the same year they built their home in Richmond Hill. So many high points, rivaled by this low point. I'm with IMPD. They're trying to evacuate the block around you. Their home sat behind the one blamed for the explosion. This is what the Konecki's and their two young children left behind. Really just made you thankful and, and appreciative of the family that you have. The couple let us see why it's so frustrating to stop by their new home under construction. It stands on the same plot of land as the one that had to be demolished. Even when this was just dirt, it was home. Even when there's no building on it, it was home to us. One month before they were to move back in, their builder stopped building. The flooring is incomplete. 
and there are no plumbing fixtures, and the woodwork isn't finished. It's not ready for the family of four. We've had a lot of hope for a little, for a little while because we had that faith, and so we know it's going to get done. Imagining that moment uh, comes in the little things, like the new door handle, destined for their front door. You know, what it symbolizes and um, just being able to walk in here and, you know, not have to drive by and, and you know, daydream about what it's going to be like, but just walk in and, like I said, see the kids playing on the floor. Until that day, the drive between their rental and home will be a way of life. And we're envisioning the future, and I think that's what keeps us going. The Konecki's hired a lawyer to get the issue resolved. The force from the explosion touched almost every home. Most needed new windows, siding, and garage doors. But in several cases, insurance companies challenge claims. That's right. About 18 insurance companies have paid out millions of dollars involving repairs and demolitions. Many homeowners tell us their insurer was cooperative. One lady told us her insurance company initially blamed nails popping out of the walls and ceiling on the family's lack of using a dehumidifier. Several people had to foot the expense of hiring structural engineers to prove their damage required a larger payout to make repairs. But I would tell somebody, don't ever give up. Fight for your rights. This is why you have insurance. This is why you pay your premiums, is for things like this. Don't let them dictate to you what they're going to do. The prosecutor's office has subpoenaed all the insurance companies to turn over pictures and documents associated with the repairs. Information that could be used during the trials. Yeah, everybody asked, said, so you still play the lottery? I'm going, why? We hit the lottery that night. We got out of a house that we shouldn't have got out of. Next, a family story of survival. Now, Richmond Hill, Road to Recovery, continues. Still tough to come back here. Just because of the memories. Uh, my oldest daughter won't get out of the car. For the longest time while the house was still up, she couldn't even look out the windows. Glenn Olvey is talking for the first time about his family's ordeal, their healing, and their future. <coughs> Glenn Olvey knows the in <coughs> and outs of this game. Oh. When you walk through the gates, everything that's on the outside doesn't matter. Glenn usually umps 120 games a year. By choice, he'll barely crack half that amount this season. That's because the noise is at times unnerving. He brings to this field the scars from the field where his house once stood. Sirens. Anytime a siren goes off, everybody you can just see everybody in our house just flinch every time that the HVAC system kicked on, you hear this thump. A couple of times I caught myself crawling out of the desk. It just feels like it, you know, it, it's right to tell what we went through. Because, I mean, <laughs> this is it. This is what we've got left here. This is what the Olvies survived. They live right next door to the explosion site and we'll never forget 11, 11 p.m. You can see how close we are. No noise, no sound, nothing. Just a warm rush of air and everything fell. His eldest daughter managed to escape on her own, but Glenn, his wife and younger daughter, were trapped underneath portions of walls and roof. Neighbors who heard the screams for help pulled them out. What if the guy, you know, the neighbors that came in and got us out, what if say it had been three, four minutes later? We were told by the fire department that just because of the damage to the house, they wouldn't even come in. Their home burst into flames moments after their rescue. This is something that we went through with as a family. And God will and no, no other families will go through it. The Olvies lean on humor to heal. When asked if the family was moving back, Glenn said yes, while referring to the movie The World According to Garp, in which Robin Williams' character buys a house, 
even though he had been hit by a plane. Honey, honey, the chances of another plane hitting this house are astronomical. See, it's been pre-disastered. We're going to be safe here. Glenn believes the odds are in favor of him rebuilding a new home on the old location. What's the odds of this happening again? And I think the next step is actually getting everybody out of the car and getting him on the lot. Once they get on the lot, they realize it's not going to happen again. And that's going to be the hardest part. The family was able to salvage some keepsakes from the rubble, like the American flag belonging to Glenn's dad, a World War II veteran. That makes him smile, as does his time behind home plate. Here, he feels at peace. No ball. Two strike. Ball. Hut. Hut. This is back to being my second home. Eventually, we'll get to our first home, but right now, this is my second home. And the Olvies hope to start building their home in the spring. Glenn is grateful to Michael Kerner, Kirk McDonald, his son David, and nephew Andrew for risking their lives to save his family. The Pacers and the city honored them last year. The family really never left, but they and others are still connected on social media. Absolutely. Facebook has allowed everyone in this area to stay in the loop on the criminal case as well as changes in the neighborhood. Homeowners also used it to figure out their neighbor's whereabouts hours after the blast. The private Facebook page actually went up months earlier because of attempted robberies in the area. The site also became a place that everyone could go whenever it was difficult to sleep. It was not only a source of communication, but um, a tool to just grieve with people who were going through the same things. And uh, also, it was helpful for you know when insurance was coming in, and you know who's got a good contractor. What have you heard about this? Um, kind of like our own little Richmond Hill Angie's list. <laughs> About 200 people are on that private Facebook page for the Richmond Hill subdivision. Facebook also helped one mother with a fight on two fronts. No, I don't think I'll, I'll never forget it. A mother's courage and the picture that put everything in perspective. On this block, Michelle Smith found she was never alone, especially when she faced not just one, but two battles. Michelle Smith is moved by the music, whether playing hymns at church or practicing at home. Her century-old instrument is the one thing she wanted to save when the house across the street exploded. I was convinced that I wasn't going to leave the house until I could board up the windows because my piano's in the front room and that's kind of my prized possession and I didn't want the weather to get to the piano. She saved it and worked on fixing her home. There was a lot of work to do. By January, another punch in the gut. It sure brings your own mortality into play. She was diagnosed with breast cancer. Her weapons, radiation, and support from cancer survivors in Richmond Hill. They gave me hope. She was also motivated by this photograph, taken days after the blast, and the words whispered by her daughter. She just put her arm around me and she said, Mom, we've got this. We're going to do this. God's got this. We're, we're going to be okay. What did you say? Cancer one thing, explosion another thing. No, they were intertwined because I was so in the trenches with them both at the same time. That So two wars? Two wars. Two wars being fought at the same time. You beat both. I did. Thank you, Lord. In August, Michelle was able to claim victory over her cancer. So I think I look at things a little bit differently now. I'm more people focused and more relationship focused. So much so, she made sure her rebuilt home had a bigger porch to let more neighbors sit and chat. I wonder if it's another community. She never gave up on people or her piano. Recovery has also meant the return of the cake lady, Vicki Kerner. It gives me joy to see other people enjoy it. 
Vicky, who's known for her desserts and wedding cakes, is back in business. Her kitchen was shut down for nearly nine months while she and her husband John rebuilt their home. Vicky believes her neighbor's strong will is a vital ingredient to their comeback. Her son Michael is quite the artist. The heroin high school senior has produced a collection focused on his experience. His pieces hope to convey the joy, the grief, and perseverance of the people around him. To know that we went through a lot, but overall that we made it through and we're stronger in the end because of it. They've been through a lot, they've seen a lot, and then this. A special house call that had people scrambling for their mobile devices. And now a fun Call 6 investigator surprise that had Richmond Hill families grabbing their phones to capture the moment. These cosmic characters drew a following as they headed to visit a nine-year-old boy. Every day, the boy asks his parents, Ryan and Sabrina Konecki, about returning to Richmond Hill. It's been tough to explain to him why his house was destroyed in that blast, and just as bad, why their new home builder stopped construction. Uh, to cheer him up, we called on members of Star Wars Indiana. Nine-year-old Logan was in for a surprise. Logan, come to the front door. In the end, Logan decided to stay with his real parents. Logan enjoyed the people in the cool costumes. For him, it was an out-of-this-world experience. He's Logan, human. going back to the desert. You think? Yeah. <laughs> Looking up and forward, our key to the road to recovery here in Richmond Hill. I'm Rafael Sanchez. Thank you for watching, and good night. How many neighborhoods do you know that a neighbor would risk his life for his neighbor? And how many neighborhoods do you know where heroes reside? Absolutely, we'll be back here. This is home. Every time we get a, you know, a neighbor moved in, you know, it, it's, it's one more victory for us. Evil is not going to prevail in this neighborhood.